Hey friends, this is Jordan with O and Co Games. As my team and I have been developing our pixel platformer Tethergeist, we've always felt very passionate about its look and feel. A game's art is inseparably connected with how people experience it, the visual cues it provides, the feelings and perspectives it evokes, the way it tells stories. Designing a game's look and feel is, well, an art. Not to mention the art is the first thing people see when they're first introduced to our game, and first impressions matter. A lot. So it should be no surprise that my teammates Rachel and Noah have been meticulous in their process of crafting how this game is going to look. Since they are the experts, I'll leave it to them to explain their artistic process in future devlogs. Yes, you'll finally be able to hear a voice other than mine. For this video though, I'd like to explain how I've taken some of their assets and implemented them in the game, from a technical standpoint. Specifically, I want to show you how we made these waterfalls and this smoke effect. So buckle up and prepare to get just a little technical. Alright, first I want to explain how we made these waterfalls. I designed them to be resizable and have procedurally generated animations within them so no two sets of lines or splashes are alike. To start, Noah sent me this animation as the source of truth for how the waterfalls needed to look. I looked through each frame and using the eyedropper tool as well as my own inferences, I created each sub sprite that makes up the waterfall. First I started with the base. Each waterfall has this white gradient at the top and bottom with the blue color in the middle. I have it set up as three separate sprites so the waterfall can stretch to any height while still having the same gradient size on the top and bottom. I also created the sprites for the foam at the top, the lines that will fall down to create the illusion of falling water, the foam and water lines at the bottom, the bubbles, and finally the mist. All of these sprites will work together to create this full image of the waterfall. With the sprites in place, I created a parent waterfall object from which all of the children objects will spawn to create the animations. So in this parent waterfall objects create event, I have a code that procedurally generates every foam object that will reside at the top of the waterfall. Each piece of foam is assigned a random minimum and maximum image scale that it animates between. Combine enough of these objects together and you get a single line of fluctuating foam foam like this. To add to the illusion of water, I added these little splash pixels that randomly jump up from the foam. On the bottom of the waterfall, I've followed a similar process to create the foam down here. The only difference is that I also have these little lines that are assigned random X scale variables to look like waves in the water. Aside from the foam, the parent waterfall object is also creating random bubble objects that float a few moments before popping. Then lastly, the parent object adds these mist animations, which again are assigned random scales and sprite indices to keep them unique each time they're made. The end result is something that I'm feeling pretty good about. The next bit of procedurally generated art I wanted to cover in this video is the smoke. In the game, smoke indicates areas in which Mei is not allowed to separate into her spirit form. Honestly, we've been through a few iterations of the smoke and it's been a bit of a pain getting it right but this final version is feeling pretty good. To create the smoke, Noah sent me an animation as the source of truth, just like we did for the waterfall. Using his animation as a reference, I created all of the sub sprites that would make up the smoke area. You'll notice there's this purple background, the particles that make up the frame of the smoke area, the particles that float around inside the smoky area, and these little plumes that float in the area like clouds. The parent object for smoke is actually this purple tile. In its code, it procedurally generates all of the other particles that make up the smoke area. For the borders, I set up the tile to look for neighboring purple tiles. So for example, if there's a neighbor to the left, it won't produce a line of smoke particles like it would on the right where there is no neighbor. Doing it this way allows for me to place any number of tiles in any grid shape and they'll all work together to create an outline of the area that I've created in the room editor. Each of the particles in the outline is given some code to make it wobble around like this. In their code, there's also a section that looks for collisions with the player. If the player bumps into the particle, it will follow along with the player, giving it this airy but interactive feel before it lazily returns to its original anchor, where it will resume wobbling around like it was born to do. The particles on the inside of the smoke area are the same as the ones that make up the outline. The only difference is that they've been randomly placed within the smoke area rather than intentionally lined up along the edges. Finally, there are these smoke plumes that float around within the purple area. 
The challenge with these plumes is that we wanted them to be able to float around and overlap each other, but look like one entity with one opacity, rather than looking like two plumes overlapping to create something like a Venn diagram. To achieve this look, I actually set up the code to first draw all of the plumes onto a single separate surface, then draw that surface as one layer with an assigned opacity. I won't get too much into the nitty gritties of how this works, but the end result is something that looks exactly how we envisioned it. And that about wraps up Devlog 3. In the meantime, please subscribe, join our Discord server, and of course, wishlist Tethergeist on Steam to keep up to date on our progress. I have included all of the links below in the description. This is our passion project, and we are so grateful to have you along for the journey. Thanks for watching.